Now, like we said earlier, it's possible to, to reverse this completion because we may realize that what we thought is complete was not really complete. That can always happen. So when you reverse it, then all of those other processes get reversed. So for example, uh, the order becomes, goes back to the old state release, right? It's not in the state of DECO anymore. Uh, the location and account assignment object are recopied from the object, right? Because the order is not, uh, not really complete yet. So, you know, other information that was earlier, they got to be recopied. Any open purchase requisitions are recompiled, right? That is, you thought earlier that, you know, materials that you needed, you created purchase requisitions, you dropped them, but you said, no, uh, you know, they still need it. Any open reservations are recompiled and open capacities are recompiled, right? So all of these things you may still need because you haven't actually completed them. This is the document uh, flow for maintenance orders, right? All the documents that we created uh, can all be tracked. For example, any purchase requisitions, purchase orders, invoices, all of those can be tracked in one central place, just like document flow for sales orders. Okay, so here, there is this thing called as the action log, which has to be activated. And that allows you to you know, track all of these pieces of information. Okay, just, it's, it's a log. It's logging every single action that takes place. So, so, it's, so it's called as the action log. Uh, integration of plant maintenance with other modules. Right? We've seen you know, several things, uh, for example, it's integrated with controlling for costs. Uh, it's integrated with financial accounting because you may buy materials. Um, it's integrated with uh, plant made uh, with human resources because people may be involved in performing activities. Right? Integrated with these, we have not looked at these integrations here. Project management, we'll see some of it when we study project management. Materials because we pr produce, uh, we, we procure, and then uh, production. Again, because of work centers and scheduling and those kind of things. Okay, so here we're just jumping into the reports that are available with uh, plant maintenance. And, you know, all the completed notifications and completed orders are, are kept. Okay, so they're all kept. So based on those, you can obviously generate all sorts of lists. Okay. So it's, uh, any kind of commonsensical list that would be required can be generated. Okay, so here's just, this remember we spoke about earlier that uh, when you when you take a maintenance order, you want to look at the materials where use list, right? Planned and unplanned use of materials. That is what this is. It's going to show you all the consumptions of materials in one place for both planned and unplanned materials. <coughs> okay, and all sorts of reports are are possible. You know, once again, you know the. Actual details of what is possible, not possible. There are thousands of things that are possible, right? So if there is a detailed question about this, you just have to use your common sense and see, does it make sense to provide this sort of a report? So that's all you have to look at. And all kinds of drill downs are possible. So for example, here you've got a report and then you're drilling down by planner group, right? And then uh, drilling down by period, right? But you can set up alternate levels of drill down if you want. Okay, in your system, and then once you get the report, you'll be able to do it, right? So there's some amount of customization possible in terms of what kind of drill downs are permitted. Okay, uh, so here we're looking here at customer service. We are now on to the next lesson, which is the process of yeah. Oh, let's see. Okay, I must have I must have hidden it by accident. Yeah, it's got hidden by accident here.
Okay, so here we are looking at a completion of maintenance notification, right? In case you're not using the maintenance order, remember we said that some companies may just use maintenance notification and, and use that. So in that case, you know what you can do with the maintenance notification. So no go is the status of the <coughs> notification when it gets complete. Okay, and it, you know commonsensical things. What 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 do you have to do in order to uh, set this status? Well, you just have to make sure that all the data are available and correct. There are no outstanding tasks. Remember, it records the activities and tasks, right? So you can't close it unless all the tasks are completed. So we just check that. The consequences, of course, our notification can no longer be changed. And the reference time for this is fixed. That, that's the time that it was complete. And it reaches this particular status, OK? Yeah, so I don't know how that, uh, that slide got hidden. Uh, so this is basically when you're using maintenance notification and not tracking completion through the order. So that is this one and management accounting integrations here you're seeing here uh, you know you create the order and then there's a cost process right that is you calculate an estimated cost for the order right so that is a management accounting activity when you plan the cost and you can do the planning by all kinds of mechanisms uh, for example when we do project management we'll see different ways of planning there but you can plan by cost element or you can plan by uh, you know, activity-based costing and things like that. And at the time you execute the order, right, when you execute the maintenance order, you're consuming resources, right? You're consuming material, you're consuming work center capacities. So you'll be recording all of those naturally so that at the end of it, you can say this was the total cost to the order. Okay? So that is this execution. Uh, and then, of course, here for when you buy goods, materials, there are going to be invoices that you're going to get. And when you pay for all of those invoices, clearly those are all assigned to the maintenance order. Right? And then finally, we settle the order. Right? So that is also a cost accounting activity. Right? So when you're doing a maintenance activity, all of these are activities that have implications for cost accounting. Right? So that, that's where the linkage comes. And when you've finished all of this, there are two things that happen. One is called technical completion of the order. Right, so you created a maintenance order and the main reason why the maintenance order was created was a technical reason. Something was malfunctioning. Right, you fixed all of that and said, okay, the order is technically complete. That's why they have that status TECA. It's technically complete, but the order is not fully complete yet because there may still be costs coming into the order. The order's costs have to be distributed to whoever the receivers are. That is settlement. Once settlement is complete, then the order reaches business completion. Okay, so there are two things, technical completion and business completion of the order. So once you've completed all the cost accounting activities, including settlement, then the order is business complete. Okay. Oh, it, it wasn't in your book. That may, that's where I hid it. Okay. So how did you know? Oh, you just looked at my slide and said, okay, okay. So you were not seeing the slide show view. You were just, uh, yeah, I was just uh, okay. then you'll see it. In the slide show view, I hid some of these slides. Oh, I thought I made a mistake in hiding those relevant slides. So then forget it. You don't need all that stuff. Okay, service order processing. Here we are looking at customer service. Okay, and in customer service, that is, this is external. Plant maintenance is kind of internal service, right? Customer service, we are looking at external service. So once again, uh, the pro it process begins with, of course, creation of the maintenance uh, service order request, right? So somebody calls in with some problem, says, you know, I've got this thing, you need to maintain it, you need to repair it, something. There's a request that comes. So we plan for it and create a service order. Right? You formally create a service order. So the initial part creation, you could think of it as some kind of a pre-sales sort of activity. Right? So you plan for it, create the order. So it's at the end of this step that the service order actually gets created. Right? Then the order is released. And once the order is released, you print it, communicate it, perform the work. Confirm the work, complete, you know, 
make it reach the status technically complete and then build a customer for the work done and then settle the order because this service order also incurs cost settle the order you know distribute the cost to whoever is responsible for it and then reach business completion okay that's the really broad uh, uh, process sorry broad process of what goes on so that is like a service notification so a service order is created and released and all of these steps the last three steps the billing document settlement and business completion those can be automated okay we'll see these steps in greater detail just now okay so this is the structure of a service order it has all the uh, standard pieces of information you can think of you know header information will consist of the customer what service is required who's supposed to do it what dates what is the reference object for which the service is to be performed all of those right and then the various operations involved in that service order what are the operations who should do it what materials are needed and costs estimated planned actual costs revenues there could be revenues right because now we are talking customer service so you can have revenues and then who are the people involved and what are all the various objects for which you would be providing service and so that's you can commonsensically we can infer that these are all the things that you need to perform customer service okay so how will you create the order one possibility is the service order can be created directly or it can create from a service notification or you can create from some other existing notification uh, meaning you created a notification and then uh, create this or you can combine several notifications into one order uh, or you can generate it from a sales order item right so here what's going on is let's say you sell a refrigerator right you sold a refrigerator now the customer by, may buy installation right they may want you to come to their house and install it right that's part of the sales order right it's, you sold a refrigerator one line item is installation right two hundred dollars installation so this service order may come from that from a sales order right so from that sales order a service order may may be created right? or of course automatically you, you may generate this from a maintenance item right so for example you may have an annual maintenance contract for the customer's refrigerator right so every year your maintenance planning will generate that order for you right but all this work is for customers okay so those are all the different ways in which you may create the order now a customer service order can be non revenue bearing or revenue bearing now you may say why why should the work done by a customer for a customer ever be non revenue bearing right the point is the company is going to get money right the question is whether the money will come to this service order or whether it will go to something else that's the only point okay so non revenue bearing for example if you do service work resulting from a sales order item right like the example i gave somebody bought a refrigerator and also bought installation then you do service work for that installation through a service order but the money goes to that sales order right because this is an item in that sales order so the revenue accrues to the sales order so that is why the service order which results from that sales order doesn't earn revenue right or a uh, service work resulting from repair and return processing right once again the revenue accrues to that order and the service order is only a by product right or of course there is direct service order you know, somebody calls you and buys the service so then you get a, a service order in which case the revenue also goes to the service order right so the whole point is you may have service order work that is done but the revenue may or may not go to the service order directly okay so when we look at settlement of service orders the process of settlement may be little different depending upon whether it's revenue bearing or non revenue bearing that's what we are looking at here right so in this case you've got a revenue bearing service order right which means the costs and the revenues both go to the service order okay so you've got the billing document 
right? Which is, you'll see how the billing document is created, but you will complete the service and then you will bill the customer for the service. That's what the billing document is. So the billing document re represents revenue to the service order. And of course, all kinds of costs that have been incurred for the order, right? Some of the costs may be direct cost. Some of them may be back flush costs that you infer, whatever it is, all the costs. So in this case, all the costs and the revenues go to the service order. And the whole order is settled, right? So for the settlement, it is the result of this whole process that will be settled. Revenue minus cost, the total profit, that's what will probably get settled. In this case, you've got a non-revenue bearing service order, right? Which means the revenue goes to something else, not to the service order. So in this case, what you do is, all the costs go to the service order, which are accumulated to the parent document, let's say a sales order, from which this service order came. And the revenues are directly given to that other document from where the service resulted. Right? So in this case, the revenue is not given to your service order because it doesn't bear revenue. And then the settlement occurs from the top level object. Okay? The service order itself is not, uh, you know, is settled to the top level document. The costs of the service order are settled here. And then that document is settled overall. For now. Okay? So the two, dif two different processes for, uh, you know, revenue bearing and non-revenue bearing service orders. Now, when you execute a service order for a customer, it's possible that some external materials or services may be procured. Okay, that's what we are looking at here. The process is nothing very complex. Uh, so, for example, you've got, uh, you realize that for your service, you need some external operation to be performed. So, you raise a purchase acquisition, create a purchase order, release the order, receive the goods, get the invoice, make the payment. So it's really the purchase process. There's nothing drastically different except that all of this is happening for the service order. That's all. Okay. Now there are two uh, two kinds of service procurements, right? When you have external, uh, when you have a service order for which you procure services externally, there are two kinds of things. One is that you just procure the service. Second process is what is called so procurement with service specifications, right? It could be, you know, that in one case, you're procuring standard services, you know, like getting somebody to move something from here to there, or it could be something fairly involved and technical, the service that you're getting, right? So in which case you will have specifications for that service, and then you will accept it only if the specifications are properly met. Right? So in the one case, it's probably, you know, that is in this case, you're procuring services, but, uh, you know, it could be, in this case, you're procuring goods, of course. So there's no, uh, there's no uh, issue of service here. But it's possible that you're getting service, but with service specifications, in which case, you've got the step of service entry, which is, you know, uh, creation of that specification sheet. Right? That is, somebody comes and says, uh, you know, formally in the system, you enter that the specifications were met, right? That's what you mean by service entry, right? And once the specifications have been met, you accept the service and then you get the invoice, okay? So the, the whole point about procuring with service specifications is that there's this additional step of accepting the service. If you reject it, of course, uh, then the process has to be repeated. Okay. Of course, again, you've got, uh, you know, service order, which can be released. Right. There's another step called put in process of release. Right. When you say put in process, it does two things simultaneously. It prints the papers and releases. Or if you just say release, it just releases and doesn't print the papers. Right. It must be for some really practical situation that they've got these options. Okay. <clears throat> and of course, before you release the order, you have to check for materials, all the usual stuff. And a release status allows you to do all of these things. It allows you to issue materials, print the papers, post cost, enter confirmations, 
all of the standard things. <coughs> okay, and confirmation once again is just like for you know the earlier one that we saw for uh, plant maintenance. You can enter uh, you know the times, and then there is confirmation of external services and uh, materials, all of these. <coughs> So it's possible, there's one screen in which you can enter overall completion, or you could enter all of these completions separately in different screens. Okay, this is important. It's called, uh, how do you bill the customer for external, uh, for a service order? Right, so a customer wanted service, you performed the service, now you have to bill the customer for the service, right? And uh, the way that is done is by creating what is called as a billing request. Okay. Billing request, if you remember, in the sales order processing, what happens is you create the sales order, create an outbound delivery, you post goods issue, and then you create a billing document, right? So at that point, posting the goods issue creates a billing request. And that, that is what causes the billing process to create a billing document, right? So here, what we're really trying to do is to step into the sales distribution process at that point. Okay, that's really what we are trying to do. So, in some sense, uh, you know, this billing request is called as an, it's like a sales order. Okay, it's like an internal sales order. It's a special form of a sales order, right? Because uh, we're really plugging into the sales and distribution process, except that we're just jumping in directly to the billing point, right? So, this billing request is what triggers uh, this billing to be generated. Now, uh, the point is, when you create a billing request, what it has to do is, ma many times when you perform, uh, you know, service for customers, external service, you will incur lots of costs, right? So, for example, somebody may travel somewhere, stay in a hotel, spend money, this, that, or you buy materials, you buy this, you incur, you know, you buy external services. All of those are what are called as dynamic items. Right, because all of that has been incurred for the order. Now you're going to go and bill the customer for all of those things. Right, so it's not just that some standard set of items have to be put in there. No, you have to put in actually what are the things that were incurred against this order. That is what they call as generating dynamic items. Right, and once you've got all those dynamic items, you create the billing document. Okay, that is what is called as a billing request. And once you create the billing request, uh, the customer will get paid by the creation of a billing document. Okay, so those are the two steps that are indicated here. First, you create the billing request using dynamic items based on actually what happened in that order. And then the invoice is sent to the customer. I think the main point to realize is that billing request is a special form of a sales order intended for service billing. So you've got settlement of the order, uh, which is, you know, you've, the order has incurred a lot of costs. Somebody's got to bear the cost. So that is the settlement of the order. Okay, so the prerequisites for settlement are order should be released. There must be a settlement rule. And uh, it must have some costs and revenues which have not yet been settled. If everything has been settled, of course, then there's nothing more to settle. Okay, and the settlement receiver can be lots of different types of objects. In other words, what we're saying is, the costs of this customer service order can be settled to many different receivers. Okay, and once again, just like before, you can see the costs by uh, you know, either cost element or by value categories. Okay, it's the same slide that, that we saw. Okay, so that completes this process of uh, enterprise asset management and customer service. Please.